Great, and thank you all for joining the uh, webinar today. Just a couple of key points. Really, we want to talk about uh, Veris Center Overview, give you a little bit of announcements, and talk about some of the objectives with testing in an agile wor world. And for anybody from an educational standpoint, talk about agile in general and some of the approaches and the key areas of focus, and obviously some of the lessons learned and benefits. A little bit about VeriCenter and our quality assurance practice. Uh, CAI is a full service quality assurance practice where we focus on process, people, and the right types of tools. It's really important and part of the subject today to really talk through and understand there are many different methodologies and approaches out there. Agile and the Scrum implementation is just another piece of those. There's certainly uh, all different types of methodologies that apply out there, and, and we can talk through the waterfall, iterative, or extreme programming. It's also important that when it comes down to the approaches, that these are process people and the tools are always a combination and mix to be successful. One is is very independent, but they all integrate and provide that solution. This is a uh, kind of a precursor to everything. We're not here to convince you that Agile and Scrum is the way to go, but just to talk to you about the capabilities and some of the benefits. And certainly, uh, there are many success stories out there with clients using Agile Scrum. And really the goal of this is how does it apply and what are the things when it, as it relates to quality assurance. Let's talk about some of the objectives and things that are happening out there. We all know, or at least from reading different things and, and it's talking to both our customers and people in the industry, that Agile and Scrum is growing. As you're probably aware, one of the keys to that is working very closely with the business and really focus on priorities and what needs to get done. Let's be clear, though, high quality is always a requirement. In fact, it's a checkbox in today's world. We cannot sacrifice quality when we're uh, implementing our systems. And I will say this, more and more companies are focusing on on their websites or web portals, for example, or systems, and they have to be able to help the customer and be efficient because everybody's trying to drive efficiency and cost, efficiencies up and costs down. With testing in Agile, uh, it's kind of understood that you're going to have short delivery cycles. They have to be still fully tested, they have to be documented, and they have to be releasable. Integration, integration, integration. The reason we say that is it's fairly easy to run a sprint and putting in, um, if you will, requirements or user stories or those kinds of things, but it has to also integrate into most systems. So that has to be a critical part of your strategy if you're using Agile and testing appropriately. Key processes. This does not mean because you go to Agile that the processes go away or the deliverables associated to them. I will say that you still should have some level of a test plan. You still should have basic block and ta tackling around traceability. But the fact of spending three months reviewing a test plan and making sure it's precise and clear and in depth is probably over. And that's why the reference about war and peace. And you need to have the right resources. In any typ typical scrum, you have a, let's just call it a seven to ten person team, and you have to have very open, great communication, and fairly technical people to handle all the different responsibilities, especially associated with the testing. So you have to make sure you're really clear. Automation, and for that matter, performance as well. In any type of quality assurance environment, a real key is to automate certain transactions or even some type of smoke test from a performance capability. This is almost a, a requirement in utilizing Agile and Scrum. There needs to be nightly builds as well as nightly automation 
uh, test to run against your builds to make sure you're effective. Otherwise, you'll struggle at the end and your velocity will go down. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then finally, data management. Obviously, it's an issue on any project, whether you're waterfall or not, but it's critical to be able to quickly set up your data, reset your data, especially if you're running very tight time frames and releasable software every, for example, 30 days if your sprint cycle is that. Let's look at Agile and Scrum at a glance and just making sure that we're all talking the same language and understand it. As you're probably very familiar with the waterfall, it very much looks like this, right? Uh, it's requirements, design, implementation, and there's toll gates at every level and handoffs. It's very sequential. It's siloed. It generally produces heavyweight process and documentation, and it sometimes if not a lot of the time, gets away from alignment with the business. And I'm going to give you an example in this approach. If you sit and have a detailed requirements planning session with your business, six months later you're producing that product, the requirements of business have changed, and you've been st stuck in your sequential cycle. Now, this is not the convention you need to convert to Agile, but this is one of the, the main issues around waterfall. And the other thing is, the business side really doesn't see the benefit until it's delivered at the very end of that cycle. And as you know, as a typical waterfall project, that could be three to six months. I'd just like to keep this up there, Agile Manifesto, that we all aspire when we read different types of documentation on Agile. It's Really, the individuals and interactions are, are over the process and tools, meaning they're all working together, they're communicating. Working software. Every sprint cycle, when it ends, has to have releasable software. And that means it doesn't necessarily have to be released to the end user, but has to be working and has to be configured. Certainly, collaboration over signing off on requirements. It's working with the business owners and, and making or product owners and making sure you're appropriate. And then responding to change. With the way Agile is set up and you're locking in your your sprint, you're locking in for those thirty days, but they can change every thirty days and prioritized uh, user stories can be moved up or moved down. And this is the way we we follow and most companies produce to be successful. As I said, the key objectives, it's delivered if your sprint cycles are 30 days, it's delivered in that sprint cycle, includes client reviews and prototyping. It gives them the ability to see um, a real reality of what it looks like. That doesn't mean you sacrifice quality. Testing is incorporated into the entire cycle rather than when the, the end. And I'll give you even a further example. Sometimes a BA or a developer may even roll up their sleeves to be part of that team to making sure the quality is there. And then the other thing is you're all in it together. Uh, there's not any finger pointing. You're a sprint team. So... Everybody works together, and it's not stuck with, okay, I delivered that. Let me know how the testing goes. And then they're, they're, all, they're all night. Everybody works together, from the marketing, the product owners, the developers. Everybody is on the same page of delivering this, if we say, working software or release of software every 30 days. <laughs>